All right, February 2019 upcoming horror titles. Um, so <clears throat> I left a couple titles off of here, one being Arctic with Mads Mikkelsen, which is coming out soon. Uh, that looks good. Just didn't think it was horror enough, um, but I stuck to everything that I felt looked horror and worth mentioning. So on February 1st, which was yesterday, so I'm getting to this one day late as usual. I try to do this on time, but... Ugh, I always get bogged down. I'm sorry. All right, so February 1st yesterday, we got Velvet Buzzsaw, which I already watched, and I was very, very underwhelmed with, and man, that was a huge letdown. Stars Jake Gyllenhaal, Rene Russo, Tony Collette, John Malkovich, directed by the guy who did Nightcrawler. I just thought it was going to be a home run. I was bored. I didn't care about mostly anything. Yeah, you can watch my review on it if you'd like, but I was let down to say the to say the damn least uh also on february 1st we have the new into the dark episode called down which is a girl stuck in an elevator i'm hoping that this is the episode that's great what are we five episodes into the show now come on guys you gotta have a great episode eventually it's just like a broken clock kind of thing right one day next up we got piercing which also comes out on february 1st with mia wachikowski I don't know how the hell to say that girl's name from Alice in Wonderland. Um, this is from the director of The Eyes of My uh, The Eyes of My Mother, which I really enjoyed it and love it, but I liked it. Very stylistic, and this one kind of looks almost like an American Psycho. It's very dreamlike. It's this guy who kisses his wife and his kids goodbye, and he goes and he plans to kill a hooker. Um, and it, as I said, it looks very odd, and it looks cool. I, I, I'm very interested in the movie. I think it's going to be a very bizarre flick, so I'm down for that. Hopefully, it's actually bizarre and not pretend bizarre like Velvet Buzzsaw. Ugh, don't get me started on that fucking movie. I'm actually getting more mad the more I think about it. All right, next up, same day, February 1st, yesterday. So all these are out right now. We have a film called Braid which is these two friends, they decide they're gonna go rob one of their psychotic friends who lives in a fantasy world. And so they, they tell themselves that they have to play into whatever sick fantasies of hers that, they, that she has. Whatever she says for them to do, they have to do it um, as, so that they can find her safe to get her money or whatever. I watched the trailer. It looks pretty out there. It looks really cool. I definitely recommend at least giving the trailer a shot to check it out. Um, yeah, I dug it. All right, so next up on the 5th, we have two movies. A lot of period piece movies I've noticed this month. A lot of them. And I always say there's not a lot of period piece horror, but this month has proven me wrong. The next one is The Mermaid, Lake of the Dead. Killer mermaid flick. You know, from... The title, I actually watched another Killer Mermaid movie maybe a year or two ago. It was actually not that bad. I was surprised. Can't remember what it was even called now. But uh, not that memorable, obviously. But this one, I watched the trailer. You know, it looked okay. It looked like it could be decent. It didn't look too stupid. But it's low budget, and I'm sure a lot of people would roll their eyes at this kind of shit and not even give it a chance. But for people who are fans of low budget creature feature type stuff, want to see a Killer Mermaid... Um, yeah, it looked okay. I'd check out the trailer at least. Um, next up, we have a movie called The Gollum. Uh, this was giving me very heavy The Witch vibes. Uh, another period, it looks like a period piece. It's set during this plague. It's the director of Jerusalem. And this uh, woman conjures a demon that is worse than the plague. And is, she summons it to help them. But of course, it goes all wrong. But the the cinematography and everything looked pretty solid. It, it, I was intrigued by this one. I didn't watch all the trailer. I only watched like maybe a minute of it, 35 seconds or somewhere around that area. And I was just, I liked it. I liked what I had saw. And I was like, I'm sold, totally checking this one out. All right, on the 8th, we got a ton of movies. We've got St. Agatha, which was directed by Darren Lynn Bowsman who directed Saw 2, 3, 4. He directed Repo the Genetic Opera. He directed frickin' The Devil's Carnival 1 and 2. He's directed a ton of stuff. The Mother's Day remake, I want to say, with um, 
Rebecca Namorne. He's done a ton of titles. Um, oh, that dumb that that one that had the really cool premise with like people taking the rooms and making it into this house, this haunted house. The hell was that movie called? Stupid movie, but great premise. Anyway, um, so yeah, Saint Ath- Agatha. This is 1950, another period piece horror. And it is this pregnant girl that comes to stay at a convent and everything seemingly okay. But as she stays there, um, it looks like maybe the place is haunted or it has a bunch of secrets that are going to get divulged throughout the flick. She sees something up in her bed and she freaks out. So it looks haunted maybe. I'm not usually big on religious type films because they always play the same way. Um, But Bowsman, I'll give it a chance. I mean... He's got a lot of hits, and he's got some misses. All right, next up, we got The Prodigy. We got an evil kid. Uh, it stars uh, freaking uh, Piper from Orange is the New Black. Um, and I don't know. I don't know what to make of that one. I'm sure you've seen the trailer, so it's not really one I need to tell you about. Next up, this movie does not need a description. I think the title says it all. The Man Who Killed Hitler... And then The Bigfoot. Yes, that is the title. And it stars freaking Sam Elliott. Yes, Wade Garrett himself going after Hitler and then Bigfoot. I watched like 30 seconds of the trailer, saw the title, all that. I was like, sold. I'm watching this movie. I don't care. You got a title like that. You got Sam Elliott in it. The trailer looks like it's decent. You know, it looks like a pretty well-made movie for the most part. I'm, I'm in, 100%. Uh, Next up, we got the Amityville Murders, which is actually coming to VOD this time. So um, I think I said it was coming out a little while back, but I I don't know what that was. Uh, But it's going to be definitely available. Maybe this is the DVD, but I saw it's coming out. Um, This one looks okay. It it has Diane Franklin returning. It's got Burt Young returning, both from Amityville 2. So I know they're not playing their roles again, obviously. (laughs) If you see Amityville 2, you'll know why. It doesn't take a genius to figure out what I'm hitting at. But, yeah. I mean, Diane Franklin's in it. I gotta watch it. Even though she's gotten older now, that was one of my main crushes. So, uh, I gotta check this one out. I don't check out many of the Amityville movies. Although, I think I've seen like 10 of them. But there's been a ton I haven't seen. I want to say there's like 19 of the fuckers now or something crazy. All right, next up is another period piece, 1846. This movie is called The Isle. Three survivors of a shipwreck, uh, you know, are on this little boat. They find an island out in the middle of nowhere. There's four residents on the entire island. They ask, they said, you know, that there's no one else there. And when they go to investigate the island, they find out that there's more than meets the eye. No, not Transformers. Um, looks kind of gothic-y. The title said that it's like the witch meets Wicker Man, which, holy shit, yeah, sign me up. So another witch um, connection or um, comparison. All right, moving on to the 12th, we have a movie called Betsy, which is a $10,000 werewolf movie. Um, I was actually uh, a party to a $10,000 werewolf movie that never fucking came to fruition which sucks but i wrote a script for a for a werewolf movie that was going to be ten thousand dollars so i don't know seeing a trailer for a werewolf movie that was made for 10 grand kind of made me a little sad that that never uh you know was made but a uh, trailer looked fine i mean it's a ten thousand dollar movie if you're a ten thousand dollar movie kind of fan check it out check out the trailer at least um next up on the same day 12th we finally got Anna and the Apocalypse coming to VOD. I'm going to get to see it because they didn't fucking release it anywhere around me when they did their limited run. Bullshit. They only got it like in California. Stupid. I don't even want to talk about it. So annoying. All right. Next day on the 13th, Happy Death Day to you. You guys know what this is. The sequel to Happy Death Day. I don't need to tell you. So if you are if you liked the first one, you're probably going to go see this one. If you didn't, then you won't. All right, on the 19th, we have a movie called Scarecrows, which I think is coming to Redbox. Low budget, you know, monster movie, the attack of the tatty boggle. Remember that fucking review? Um, and eh, meh, it was just kind of like typical monster slasher fair. It kind of looks more of a slasher. It's a killer scarecrow. I mean, you can get it from the title and stock generic 
fucking cannon fodder for you to throw at the screen. Hopefully we'll see some tits and decent kills and, and it'll be worth a watch. I don't know. All right, number on, uh, number, uh, not number 22. On the 22nd, we have a film called The Turning. Now, I can't find a, a freaking trailer or anything. It's weird that there's no trailer at this point. And the film says it's completed, but there's no trailer. There's no pictures. So, I don't know. Take this one with a grain of salt. But according to the internet, it's coming out on the 22nd. The reason I bring it up, though, is because it stars Mackenzie Davis, who I just love. And Finn Wolfhard himself, man. Freaking from Stranger Things and the It uh, re-adaptation. Uh, the kid's awesome. So see him in here. Super cool. The director, I looked at her work. Impressive stuff. Did a lot of cool TV show episodes. Um, I really look forward, and this is based on the book The Turn of the Screw, which has been adapted a few times to film. Um, but I don't really know anything about this movie except for the cast, uh, what book it's uh, based on, and the director. So that's one to look forward to. But I, I don't know. We'll see if it actually comes out on the 22nd. Also on the 22nd, we have Lords of Chaos, which is, I think, it says it's based on a true story, but it says it's based on truths and lies, truths and lies. So I don't know if this is actually based on a true story, but it's about a black metal band and story stars Rory Culkin and they're like forming a band and they're killing people. The trailer looks cool. It's heavy metal and horror. Always a good combination. Look at freaking Deathgasm. Look at Devil's Candy. Look, I mean, yeah, put rock and roll and horror together. Good combination. Doesn't always work, but a lot of the times it does. So trailer was pretty cool. I like Rory. Um, we'll see. Uh, next up, we got on the 26th, a very interesting movie because it looks identical. This is a movie called Rampant from South Korea. So it's the same country. It looks exactly the same as the Netflix original series, Kingdom. It has to be based on the exact same story. It looks identical. The people in the movie are dressed with the exact same freaking, you know, attire as the guys in the movie. The temples all look the same. The zombies all look the same. The situations all look the same. It's about a prince who goes in. He's like, what the fuck? Can someone tell me what's going on here? This is a remake of the same story. It has to be, right? It has to be. It is. It, it, there's no way it isn't. So... There we go. Trailer looks cool. It just looks like more of Kingdom. Um, because Kingdom was so great, I'm, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. Do I want to watch a different adaptation of this? what seemingly is the same exact story? Maybe. It looks awesome. So, South Korean fucking zombie movie, and it's from the makers of Train to Busan, which I loved and was one of the best zombie movies of the decade. So, I guess I will check it out, but okay. And then finally, there's a movie from 2016, which is, I guess, finally getting a DVD release. I can only find releases for festivals. So I don't know if this is the first time we're actually getting to see it as the general public in 2019, three years after it was first shown. That's crazy to me. But maybe it is called The Unseen. And as I said, that is on the 26th, the same day as Rampant. And this is a guy who left his family. He hasn't seen his daughter in eight years. She goes missing. So he comes home to find her. And I was like, okay, is this really a horror movie? Is this when I was watching the trailer? And then something very weird and intriguing happened that I was so not expecting. Um, I almost wish that I would have went into this blind and when that happened. So if, if you don't want to know anything, just shut it off. It's, kind of, it's not a spoiler because it's in the description and it is part of the movie uh, and it plays into what the the title of the film is, although I would have thought that it was his unseen daughter because he didn't see her for eight years. But here we go, the spoiler, I suppose. Uh, I wish I would honestly not have known this, but um, he's turning invisible. So like he takes off his glove, which at the beginning I thought his hand was cut up. I, I didn't realize that his fingers were turning invisible. I just thought he had gotten in an injury and his fingers were missing flesh. Um, but then he takes off his hat later in the trailer and half of his head is completely invisible and, and starting to, like his body is disappearing. So it's like an invisible man 
mixed with the uh, um, oh what the hell's the name of that movie um, Prisoners ooh love that movie Jake Gyllenhaal Hugh Jackman fucking fantastic film uh, but it kind of feels like that or like a Taken or something like some guy comes back to town looking for his daughter after she goes missing and they have an estranged relationship and he's turning invisible as well it's kind of like randomly thrown in as well like and he's turning invisible i don't know it was weird in the trailer i was like okay that's out there but uh i don't know i I, i'm guessing it's a metaphor you know like he's he's turning invisible to his daughter because he's been gone for so long and and once he finds her maybe he'll that'll heal him he'll immediately come back i i'm already guessing what the metaphors are But uh, yeah, anyway, uh, do any of these excite you? Did I miss any? Please, if you know of other ones, put them down below. I do this every month. I always want to know what's coming out. There's always a surprise here and there, which is great. But yeah, let me know if you know any others. Other than that, guys, uh, have a good February. And I'll see you with the next one in March, probably another day late. (laughs) We'll see. All right, guys. Adios.